Looking to buy, sell, or grow your business to position it for a sale? As the owner and managing partner of Sun Acquisitions, Dominic Rinaldi has personally been involved in over 300 M&A transactions. He has seen and done it all, consulting with large and small businesses across a broad range of industries. On M&A Unplugged, he'll interview buyers, sellers, and their advisors about their experiences scaling, selling, and acquiring businesses. On every episode, you will get key learnings, but most importantly, you will be better prepared for your own acquisition or sale. This is M&A Unplugged with your host, Dominic Rinaldi. I am pleased to welcome my guest today, Toby Van Auer. Toby, along with his wife, Anne Marie, started and built Sizzle Productions, a Chicago-based staging company. They built this business from scratch into a significant provider of residential and commercial staging services. For those of you not familiar with staging services, it's become very popular. If you have a home or a commercial space and it's empty, the way to garner the highest value is to have it professionally staged. And these staging companies like Sizzle Productions will come in and stage the space, bring in furniture, lamps, artwork, whatever you need. It's tremendous service and it's growing. And what's so impressive really about this story with Toby and Anne-Marie is that they both left good jobs to start this business. Toby, in fact, was a tax practice leader with Ernst & Young and held a significant position. And Anne-Marie was a successful realtor. And to add to that, they had two children in college, lots of responsibilities, and they really left that all behind to start this. To me, that's the definition of an entrepreneur. And in an incredible twist, the ultimate buyers of this business wound up being a husband and wife team. And the husband, in fact, had left his job with a top tier consulting firm. It just, you, you couldn't write a better script. Uh, Toby, thank you for joining us on this episode of the M&A Unplugged podcast. It must have been somewhat surreal for you to have a husband and wife team make an offer on your business and ultimately buy it and and see all the correlations between how you got started and, and what they were trying to do. Absolutely. And the couple that bought it, in addition to already having one three-year-old child, they had, I think, a four-month-old baby on the day that we closed. Unbelievable, <laughs> right? You know, I think every entrepreneur always envisions someone who will be emulate themselves or, or at least that they can feel comfortable handing off their business to. And we just felt so comfortable with the buyers because they were, we like to say, kind of a mini, mini us. They were just, you know, many years younger, but they had the drive and the energy and just we saw so many parallels in their lives. Must have felt so good to be turning over the business to a couple like that. That that had to be sort of exciting because you've built a legacy, right? I mean, you built that business from scratch and to turn it over in a similar situation must have been so rewarding. Absolutely. And we we literally pinch ourselves uh, to say we couldn't have we couldn't have written a script for a better buyer. And again, as you know, the buyers came through. Sun Acquisitions. Thank you for that little plug there. Uh, you were a pleasure to work with, uh, you and Anne-Marie, and we're so happy. And let's start with where you're at now. So you sold the business, but boy, that wasn't all you sold. You sold your business, you sold your house, <laughs> uh, you moved, you're in retirement. I mean, I was just talking to you a minute ago before we started here, and you told me 30 minutes ago you were on your boat. That's true. We moved from uh, the North Shore, where we had resided for almost 27 years and bought a home in South Carolina. And it's on a uh, very large lake, almost a thousand miles of shoreline. And mid-November, we sold the business. We had a 90-day commitment to the new owners for consulting if you will, passing the baton to be there to answer questions and make introductions, you know, various assorted 
the housekeeping items and running the, the bones of the business, if you will, to make sure that we were there to assist in any way that they needed us. That took us through February 15th. We then had a two offers on our home within a couple of days after it never actually was formally listed. So we had to get going. And <laughs> Wow, the stars just totally aligned. Uh, that is just tremendous. You know, there's a lot of, there's some studies out there. I shouldn't say there's a lot of studies, but there's studies out there that sometimes, you know, owners sell their businesses and there's some remorse, you know, they didn't feel like the transaction was what they wanted, or they didn't have the next thing to go do. And in your case, uh, in talking to you, it doesn't sound like that's, that's the case at all. Every single day, we thank our lucky stars that everything worked out wonderful. And as I mentioned before, we could not have had a better buyer than the, the two young people who, who bought it. Absolutely no regrets, not for one minute. So happy to hear that. So one in the good column of no remorse and sold the business in a, in a great way and were able to move on to the next thing that was meaningful in your life. So Toby, congratulations to you and Anne-Marie. Couldn't have happened for two nicer people and, and so glad to see that, you know, you've landed where you are. Let me, if we could, uh, let's go back to the beginning. I love to hear these stories. I mean, I know you had a fairly significant job and Anne-Marie was a realtor at the time. And then, you, you know, you both decide we're, we're going to leave this all behind and you're going to go start this new thing, which probably back in the, at the time you did this, staging was a known thing, but nowhere near what it is today, right? Exactly, Dominic. When we started, our friends and former colleagues said, well, what are you guys doing with staging? Is that something like, did you guys have a theater background, something with the Schubert Theater? <laughs> and of course, that was pre-HGTV. It was it, it was much more scary, and there were many days that we looked at each other and said, what the heck did we get ourselves into? We did have a business plan, and we said if we kept making our, our goals and guideposts gave us the signal, okay, we've hit that threshold, we'll invest a little more. But at every juncture, you, you question it, unlike... The, the sale of the business that was that was a in retrospect comparing the two a no brainer so tell me you, so you leave your job Anne Marie stops doing realty work and where did you start i mean what what was the you know what was the first thing that you all did well as as luck or fate and fortune would have it um, our very 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 first engagement was for a neighbor and friend who were having their home completely gut rehabbed. We had been out to dinner with them at the club. They were kind of having second thoughts about how much they had bitten off with their home rehab. We just cataloged that and said, gee, we're just, you know, we're thrilled for what you're going to have at the end. Just keep focused on that. At the same time, literally the, the very next day, Anne-Marie received a call from another friend who was selling his three of his properties on the North Shore, and he was having trouble. And Anne-Marie assessed it. She said, gee, you've got a great team of realtors there, a good agency. I would suggest don't change horses in the middle of the race. That same evening, at about one o'clock in the morning, Anne-Marie sat bolted up in bed, and she said, I think... I think I've got the, the answer. And I'm thinking candidly that she has, she's had like either a nightmare or a sleep talking. And the upshot of it was we put our friends that were having their home refurbished and they were commiserating the day before about all the consternation they were going to have to go through to have the furniture removed out of the home, put in storage. We said, well, wait a minute, let's just take all of the furniture from our friend's home and we will put it over into this other individual's home who has who really needs a model home to help sell all three. We got everyone together. Everyone thought it was a great win-win situation. And that was our absolutely first staging engagement. 
So you didn't have any, uh, at this point, a staging inventory, and we can talk a little bit about that. So you had no staging inventory, but you took, you know, all this furniture from one place and put it in another, and you were in business. Correct, correct. And then quickly on the heels of that, Emory, a, a number of realtors had approached her to stage their listings, and she felt that the answer was always, you know, thank you, that's very kind of you to ask, but that is her value added amenity when getting the listings. And so she felt that she couldn't really give give that service away or sell that service. Unfortunately, again, a, a very close friend of hers who is also a broker in the North Shore said, Emory, I'm going to keep asking you every single day until you say yes. So you might as well just say yes now. We really need to get a new construction, multi-unit building staged. It's just never going to sell. It's too near the railroad track and in the North Shore. And I just know that that it would look beautiful if, if you were to stage it. We took the assignment on with the understanding that she just couldn't tell anyone that we had done this for her because she had already told numerous other agents the answer would be no. The agent, Emory, had agreed to stage the residence for, left the country, and literally that very weekend that we staged it, it went under a contract, and it was a cash offer, and the buyers of that condo wanted a quick close. That was one of the drivers for their wanting to buy this property. They wanted to buy some of the furniture. So the helping realtor had to find out that, yes, Anne-Marie and Toby Vanover were the ones who staged it. So the word was out. Was there furniture in this house before or was was it empty? Totally empty. Oh, so it was totally empty. Okay. And we said, okay, we'll do it. And we put together a business plan. So that was our first revenue generating staging engagement. And then because Anne-Marie had told literally about 12 to 15 other realtors, she then sent out a quick letter saying, just so you know, I'm now going to be offering this to realtors on the North Shore. And it just picked up from there. And within a matter of probably three months, we both said, you know what, we're putting a ton of money in this and we we're gonna have to jump in with both feet. We can't both do our what was, you know, sixty hour week other job. And that's when we jumped in with both feet. And the investment was really in the what in your business is called inventory, right? Correct. The furniture and the artwork. Lamps, bedding, exactly. So your foothold was on the North Shore and in the Chicago market. And then how did you grow from there? Because I know when you sold it, you were covering a a pretty broad area and you went beyond residential. You were doing commercial properties. Right. We started on the North Shore and our toehold was new construction. Again, we're going back now, you know, almost 16 years ago. And we realized builders tend to aggregate. And of course, they have their own network. And it became very popular amongst them. Gee, we're selling, our properties are selling faster. We're getting closer to our asking price and in some cases over asking price. So they really became our, if you will, early adopters. Then as we looked at potential market we realized there's a lot more potential in Chicago than there is on the North Shore, be it from Winnetka up through Lake Bluff. Then we, some of the builders that we had worked with on the North Shore also had projects in the city, and we just naturally migrated to the city. And obviously, there was far more business in the city than there was in the North Shore. That's interesting. Why is that? Because there's so many more unit in a densely populated area? Absolutely. Okay. You know, purely numbers. You know, the aggregate population probably of the North Shore is maybe a half million people. And that's being generous. You know, you're looking at millions of people. 
So there, the development size, we did some huge developments. Some of the, the Skyline condo buildings in downtown Chicago, we were honored to provide the models for those. After the shakeout, as I call it, when the economy about nine years ago went south, we actually started doing more individual, smaller residences rather than doing just a large commercial because that that market had evaporated and we found that that was equally profitable and there were certainly far more single family residents available be it a condo or townhome than large developers who needed our services. And what happened during the recession? I know it was so impossible to to sell real estate. Did the need for your services increase it, it during did. the real estate meltdown? It did. Yeah. It, it was almost the inverse. When things were selling very well, someone would question, you know, do we spend the, is it an investment that really is going to yield the returns that we want? During the downturn, it was a necessity. And that was truly how prospective sellers viewed the services of staging. Yeah, that makes sense. You needed to have any advantage you could during the real estate meltdown, right? To have your property stand out from all the others. So that that makes sense. Yeah. So Toby, you built this really successful business. You acquired more inventory. It sounds like your relationships just took you in all sorts of directions and you and Anne Marie really built a, a tremendous business with a, with a lot of scale. When did you first start thinking, okay, we we have something here that might be, you know, really valuable and and we could sell this? You know, I'm not sure that we came to that understanding. We knew that both because of our age and the investment that we had made that we were going to either have to take it to a next level, which would be perhaps franchising or, you know, something on a much larger regional or national level. And quite frankly, we just didn't feel that we had the energy level to do that. Interestingly enough, Ken Kurtz had sent us something back in, I think it was early March of 2018. Uh, and I'm not sure if it was something as simple as, you know, what is the right time to sell your business? But he had sent that. At the same time, one of our competitors asked if we could join he and his wife, uh, some of their team members, to go out to dinner and just see if there might be some synergies for us to to get together. And it, it became pretty apparent to us that they were shall we say, underfunded, and probably wouldn't, it just would not have been a good fit. Uh, And we realized that we didn't need to take any further. But that may have cemented in our mind's eye that may be the right time to at least start exploring. I see. So local competitor approached you, you had what we call a dance with them a little bit, and you realized that, you know what, this probably isn't the right exit for us. And it led you down the path to deciding that maybe selling was was in the cards. Correct. And then it was somewhat fortuitous at the time. So we thought a friend had called and he was actually had been one of our primary vendors for uh, one of our our lines that we, we bought wholesale. And he had changed jobs and I had teased him in the past. He and his wife, both, we became professional friends as well as personal friends. We actually staged property for them and his brother-in-law and his sister-in-law. And his first name is Stan. And I was teasing Stan and said, well, Stan, I always thought that you were going to either come work with me or you were going to buy the business. And that casual comment led to his introducing us to someone else that was a mutual friend of his who was interested in buying a business. Unfortunately, it also became apparent to Anne-Marie and I, this was not the right buyer. Hmm. He, we think, was both underfunded, didn't have the drive, certainly didn't mate and match all the skill sets that we felt were most important for this business to be successful. 
So after those two attempts, or maybe not even attempts, but you went down the path a little bit, you decided maybe it's time to bring in a professional, you hire our firm, Sun Acquisitions, and we go on to represent you. But I want to really talk about the process. Let's start at the highest level. What was your expectation of the process? And then how did that unfold for you? I'm just curious to see what your thoughts were coming into it and then how you felt at the end of the process. We had, as I said, literally had a brief conversation with Ken Kurtz in March, mid-March. In the first week of June, I think Ken had again sent us some kind of a flyer. We had kept in touch. And our expectation was that we wanted to sell the business, that we were not going to just dip our toe in. As an entrepreneur, Dominic, I think that we always want to drive the bus. We don't want to be a passenger on it. And I mistakenly thought that my experience with a big six, big four accounting firm uh, and Anne Marie's sales acumen as a as a real estate broker that we would be able to sell the business on our own. And it became apparent to us that we were going to have to turn to a professional firm like Sun Acquisition, who had the experience and the know-how to drive that process. And Ken was very professional in our first meeting. We walked away Our expectations were this firm has sold a lot of businesses, a lot of different kind of businesses, and we were impressed with the professionalism of our first meeting with Ken. I think that he had introduced us to you also briefly at the conclusion of that meeting. So you had never bought or sold a business before. Is that that correct? No, I actually had owned another business many, many, many years before, but it was much smaller scale, totally unrelated. And it was something that I had only been involved in for a short period of time. So I had bought an existing business and within a matter of four years had increased it, sold it, flipped it, and then went in a different direction. Understood. I really had no, what I would call, experience with a professional company to sell a business before. So the process, let's break down the process. So you have the business valued and then you get to market and you meet with buyers and and, and the buyers, you know, ask you tons of questions and then you, you get offers and then you move in the diligence. There's a lot involved. You got to see firsthand had you anticipated all of the things that would go into selling the business? Had you, had you, could you have imagined all the things that would have happened? No. So talk to me about that and talk to me about what, what were the surprises for you? Because I think the m and Unplugged audience community would love to hear, you know, where, where were you surprised along the way? Well, I was surprised with actually, I hope I don't sound patronizing, but with the professionalism. And I'll give you an example. We met with Ken the first week of, of June. And I should let everybody know who Ken is. Ken Ken is one of the advisors here at Sun Acquisitions and, and helped Toby and Anne-Marie get their business sold. So, Correct. And of course, he asked for financials, uh, wanted to see cash flow sheets. He also wanted to understand our business to, if you will, I think, verify that we had a viable business that you know, we were clean under our fingernails or was everything was as we said it, it was. So I certainly understood the due diligence that Sun Acquisition did of us. I also appreciated that the time Ken took to understand our business and he worked through various clarifications on the financials. And he also helped, of course, to develop a marketing brochure. I didn't realize that it would be as in-depth as it actually was. I think that Sun Acquisition really took the time to understand the business. It wasn't, oh, okay, here's a company that does staging. This is what they gross. This is what their, what their expenses are. I felt I was impressed that Sun Acquisitions looked at our business with a large microscope. 
and they wanted to, to you know really understand the nuts and bolts and the financial dynamics of the business. So then you go on to the next step. You started to meet buyers, and what, what was talk to me about your experience there in meeting buyers? What what was that like? And I know when you met the buyers, ultimately bought the business. There was that obvious connection, but you met a bunch of others, and you know what? Talk about your experience there. What did you learn from from going through those? discussions and meetings and interviews? Again, going back to our timeline, in mid-July, Ken had finished a marketing material brochure, if you will. He had introduced us to Joe Beer. Joe's title with Sun Acquisition was Director of Closing. And you, when I say you, Dominic, I mean Sun Acquisition really prepped us well for these will be some of the questions that buyers will want. It really was almost like a tutorial of this is, these will be some of the questions. These, you know, we want you to be forthright, but we also don't want you to, if you will, share too much about the business at this point, place, and time, which we I found very valuable, as did Ian Marie. And so you get through the process with buyers and you start to, you get offers and you accept an offer and you move into diligence. And, you know, what, what was that like for you going through due diligence? Well, Anne-Marie did the majority of the due diligence. And I will just say that I think Joe was just absolutely nothing short of stellar, Joe Beer. He made sure that it was these 84 line items were in bite size so that we could evaluate them, answer them, respond to them completely, and not be overwhelmed. But it was, at first blush, a rather daunting list of requests. So let's talk about that for a second. Folks that haven't been through the diligence process, when you get to an accepted offer, the first thing the buyer is going to do is deliver a list of all the things they want to see. And in many cases, it's just a standard list that an accountant, an attorney, or some professional will pull together. And you know, we've seen lists as large as 300 plus items. And it can be very daunting. And in your case, I don't know exactly how many items were on it, but it sounds like there were a lot. Yes. Now, it, I'm I'm going to guess, just having done this a couple hundred times, that half of them didn't even apply to your business. Is is that a fair statement? Some of them didn't, and some of them seemed redundant. And as you mentioned, the buyers who bought the business, he was a consultant with part of an M and A practice, so he certainly knew how to look, if you will, at a business. He wanted to see it in 3D. Yeah. And it's not, it's not unusual. I mean, uh, this is the opportunity for buyers to really uh, peel back the onion on the business and correct and see what's there, uh, which is their right. You know, they're going to spend good money and they, they need the opportunity to see everything, but it can take time and, and effort. Can you remember anywhere a- along that process where you looked, you and Amory looked at each other and went, wow, we're trying to run a business and we've got <laughs> these requests are coming from every <laughs> angle. This is just a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm smiling, and Emery and I absolutely looked at each other and said, "Are you kidding me? Is this you know? Is this really? Is this is this really? Do we need to answer all these questions? And why are they asking this? You know? And thank goodness again, Joe calmly and discreetly broke things down." He articulated the importance, looking at it from the buyer's perspective. And he was a bit of a salesman in that he induced us not push the panic button. We did receive an offer right out of the chute from, it was actually, I remember it was uh, the 13th of August. Wow, you remember the day. I do, I do. <laughs> Emery and I were out of state and we came back and Ken had texted saying, call me right away whenever you guys land. We've received a full price offer. And that was on Monday the 13th. And on that Friday, we had met interim time with several other buyers that Sun Acquisition had lined up. And the buyers who ultimately bought the business, we met them Friday afternoon. And I think that we received the the offer from them that Friday by day's end. 
So in the diligence process, we get these reactions a lot from people that, oh my goodness, I can't believe the number of requests that are coming our way. Do you think there's anything you could have done while you were running the business that would have made that process simpler, uh, easier? You know, one of the things that Ken and Joe impressed upon us was you need to continue to run the business as though it weren't for sale. So we want you to continue to have the same percentage of growth that you've had every month, every quarter. And this is just going to be a, a process that, that you know, you have to kind of buckle in and, and do. And yes, it, there's no question it did take a lot of extra effort, but it was well worth the effort. Thank you so much for bringing that up. And to the m and Unplugged podcast community, Toby brought up a really key point here that we try to impart to all of our clients. So critical to continue to run your business almost better than ever once you decide to sell. We have had some unfortunate stories where owners, they get ready to sell and they decide to put the business on the market and then they will check out I and mean, they won't pay as much attention and the business suffers and, and there's nothing harder for an M&A advisor than representing a business that is in decline. It makes for a very difficult situation and a loss of value for the owner in most cases. So really point well taken, Toby. Thank you. Thank you. If you'll allow me to share this, not only to, to keep the the revenue coming in, but changes in personnel. Joe and Ken did such a great job, uh, again, of articulating the importance of continuing, if you will, to polish the business, make sure that it doesn't have any rust spots on it, make sure that everything is running in tip top shape. And that's you know exactly the point. You want to maintain value and get the highest value for your business have it doing the best as you're trying to to get through the sale process. Correct. So Toby, you're getting through diligence and you, you know, you're then starting to work with attorneys and finalize the transaction. But there was one other thing uh, in your business that I think is worth just discussing a little bit without, you know, getting into specifics and numbers or anything like that. But you ran the business as a C corporation. And, you know, for those folks who are out there listening and have an entity that's a C corp, when it comes time to sell, there are certain taxes that you're going to have to pay both at the corporate level and the individual level that can really eat into the proceeds of your business. And Toby, we had that situation here and and through some uh, different methodologies, we're able to minimize the tax liability of of a C corp because you and Anne Marie had you know been such a big part of this business and growing it. And really, the business was built on the backs of the two of you. And so, can you talk about that a little bit? Well, Dominic, you're exactly right. And having been in a Position with a big four company, I was almost embarrassed that I hadn't taken the time to really maximize from a tax perspective the structure of the business. And the way the C corporation and moving it over to a sub S corporation, there really wasn't an easy way to, if you will, make the fix in a legal, long term way. And we were fortunate enough, again, to have you and your team there to say, you know, we think that there is maybe a way. I think if you'll indulge me in, in this, I think that whether it's a professional company that's going to go public, we know that they oftentimes have used, you know, had a small accounting firm, an attorney that maybe was a friend. But when someone's getting ready to sell their business, I think that it's just absolutely paramount to have your cadre of professionals, your attorney, your accountant be completely up to speed on M&A. And if they're not, then it's time to develop that new relationship. And when I had voiced that concern and 
you, Dominic, were, were kind enough through Joe Beer and Ken Kurtz to suggest a couple names. Those professionals literally became part and parcel of our team to help sell the business. And they came up with a significant savings that we thought just wasn't even possible. This is such a key area. And I I just would like to add on to that. I, I would suggest that the moment in time to actually even consult these folks is well in advance of once you've decided to sell. I've been in a lot of various seminars and one of the truest things that I've ever heard is you should be running your business every day as though you're going to sell it because that time, that moment in time may be forced upon you earlier than you would have liked. And so to maximize the value of your business, you really want to be paying attention to all of these things very early on. And I I know it's a very hard thing for people to wrap their heads around because you're so busy building a business and maintaining what you have, but it won't take much to really consult with a couple of M&A advisors, a good M&A accountant, good M&A attorney, an M&A advisor, well in advance of when you're ready to sell, they can look at your business in certain ways and give you some great advice so that when the moment does arrive, you're in the best position possible because it's not just about what you sell the business for, it's how much you keep and put in your pocket. And in this case, Toby and Amory, luckily you were able to not only have a nice purchase price, but also you know, your net number was, was a good number because of you know the strategies you were able to deploy. So, Agreed. And I think in retrospect, that what you just said should be underscored. It just is so important to have the right team in place long before, because in our particular case, we were running and playing catch up. And if you can imagine getting a new attorney, getting a new M&A accountant, they were excellent. It would have made the whole process less stressful if we could have had those people in place well in advance. Toby, thank you for those comments. Uh, You know, I think this is really a great place to sort of wrap up. So Toby, I would ask you from a very high level, if there was one piece of advice that you would offer to other uh, business owners about the the process of selling their business, what, what would it be? I would say really trust your advisor at Sun Acquisition. I can't begin to explain the importance of line items that Ken and Joe shared with us during the process. Something as simple as, as an example, we really want to limit the interaction that you have. I want that to be structured. I don't want there to be, if you will, offline conversations. And when we first heard that, I thought, that seemed, number one, a little restrictive. And second, I couldn't see the value in it. But we heeded their advice on things that were as simple as that and other more important facts, such as when we inquired about who would you suggest that we engage that would be part of the team for professional services, attorney, accountant, I think it comes back to really trusting them and having that leap of faith. And I think all entrepreneurs, we do things with a gut level and we take those risks. And I think once you make the commitment to go with the advisor, you really have to listen and heed their advice and their wise counsel because you guys have done this hundreds of times And as an entrepreneur, it's going to be maybe a once or twice event in their entire life. Yeah. Toby, thank you so much for those comments. I am trying to get in the habit of asking all of my guests, sort of like my straw poll. This is my own way of, you know, sort of taking a straw poll on books that people have read. So I'm wondering, is there a favorite book, whether it be a business book or any book in general that you've read that really had an impact on you in your life? I know that you had asked me this one other time, Dominic, and I really can't say any one book. I think that there's a passage 
about a wise man has many counselors. And I think that there is not one book that I can point to to say, you know, this was this provided me with the counsel or the guidance, but rather a compilation of experiences to come to the realization that when you're going to sell your business and your business is your baby, I understand that it, it was our baby. We, we lived it and breathed it for uh, not 40 hours or 60 hours or 80 hours, but literally just about every waking moment. You want to make sure that not only do you get value when you go to sell it, but you also want to make sure that it's going to be successful and to it becomes a legacy for the next owner owner. Toby, I want to thank you so much for being our guest today and so happy for you and Anne Marie and I wish you nothing but the best as you explore your your new adventure down in South Carolina. It sounds awesome. And I appreciate you getting off the boat here for 30 minutes or an hour to <laughs> spend time with us. Dominic, the pleasure is all ours. And again, we can't thank you and the Sun Acquisition team enough. And the very best to you and, and the team. Thank you. So M&A Unplugged community, let me just spend a minute summarizing a few of the key points that Toby brought up during our interview today. One, the entrepreneurs have a natural tendency to want to do things themselves. As an entrepreneur myself, we're A-type personalities. There's nothing we can't do. But a common theme that I think you're going to hear from the people that we interview and certainly from us is having the right set of advisors involved in your business not just when you're ready to sell, but while you're running it. And then certainly when you're ready to sell can really make a very significant difference in the value of your business and not just what you sell it for, but how much you walk away with. The other thing that Toby covered a little bit was diligence and uh, how intrusive that can be and how overwhelming that can be and daunting. And, you know, with the right, again, with the right set of advisors, you can make your way through that. It may seem daunting, but there's a methodical way to, to get through it. And there's many things that can be done well in advance of selling your business to make sure that it's in the best shape possible. And then the third, I, I think, nugget that Toby gave us today, which I think is absolutely true. We say this to people all the time. The moment you decide that you're going to sell your business is the exact time to pay as much attention to it as you possibly can. Keeping the business running smoothly and and trending in the right direction, so important to maximizing the value in the final transaction. What a tremendous opportunity to meet with uh, Toby today and interview him. And so happy that him and Anne Marie are enjoying retirement now. All of today's information will be available in the show notes. If you would like to learn more about the process of acquiring or selling a business, please visit our website at sunacquisitions.com or feel free to reach out to me at drinaldi at sunacquisitions.com. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the M&A Unplugged podcast. And until then, please remember that scaling, acquiring, or selling a business takes time, preparation, and the proper knowledge. Thank you for joining us today on M&A Unplugged. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and recommend it wherever you get your podcasts. If you want more great information on how to scale, acquire, or sell a business, please visit our website at sunacquisitions.com.